Okay, so we've got our terrain, uh, we've got it uh, sized down, we've got our scene saved, and we're ready to start shaping things out. Now, there are a lot of different ways to shape your terrain, and I'm not going to be going over every single one of them right this moment. What we're going to do is utilize the terrain toolkit to create an initial shape for our terrain that we can then edit with the standard tools that are kind of built into terrain objects in general. Now, to use the terrain toolkit, there's some things you kind of have to know first. If we come over to the project folder, you can see our terrain toolkit folder inside, which came in because we loaded in that package. I'm going to expand that. And there's a few things in here, uh, all of them you should be aware of. You have the documentation, which is also available online if you'd like to read more about it, or by all means, check out the videos uh, in this series that we're going to be doing over the terrain toolkit, which should explain pretty much anything you really want to know. And then down under this, you see uh, some other folders. The, the real important one I want to point out is our Terrain Toolkit C-Sharp script. And if you take a close look, there's a little tiny C-Sharp icon there. If you click on this, you can see the script that makes this up. So basically, that is the Terrain Toolkit. It does not come standard on your terrains just because you load it in the package. It has to be added onto your terrains. And there's a few different ways we can do this. And I want to show you each one of them. One way is to grab the Terrain Toolkit script that we've just exposed here inside the Terrain Toolkit folder and you can drag it right onto the Snow World Terrain object, which is located in your hierarchy panel. If I just let go, and then we click the Snow World Terrain, we can now take a look, and Terrain Toolkit has been added. Now, if you're like, well, wait, how do I know that wasn't there before? Oh, don't worry, I'll show you. We can remove this if you don't want the Terrain Toolkit anymore. We can hold down the right mouse button on Terrain Toolkit and choose Remove Component. Just left-click that, and it goes away. So you can see, the Terrain Toolkit is kind of like a bolt-on addition that you can just add to your terrain. So I'll drag it on one more time so you can see what happens. If we drag it, bink, it appears, and there's all those additional tools. Now that's a, an important concept to keep in mind when using Unity. There are all kinds of tools available like this, some of them that come with Unity, others that you can download, components that can be added onto your game objects to change their behavior. Right. You're not limited to what's already available either by Unity or other people, it, once you start getting familiar with Unity, you get into scripting, you can actually create these yourself. That's right. And we have series that will be made available soon, or depending on when you're watching this, they may already be out there, that will show you how to create your own add-ons to um, the Unity editor. Oh, yeah. Uh, all kinds of great stuff. Now, I'm going to go ahead and remove this one more time because I want to show you a few other ways that this could be added. You're not limited to just dragging it over here to the hierarchy panel. Another way we could do it is to select our terrain here in the inspector, and we can just grab the terrain toolkit script and drag it over into the inspector. Now, I haven't even really mentioned the inspector yet, but it is this great big panel that pretty much dominates the right-hand side of your screen. Now, we'll talk more about the specific nature of the inspector in another video. Right now, all I want you to know about it is that all of the properties for an object that you ever need to edit are going to be found here inside the inspector, along with settings for all of the components that are attached to that object. Now, if when I say that, if you're like, well, what do you mean components that are attached? Well, first off, I mean things just like the terrain toolkit, which we just added onto our terrain. But aside from that, we'll be talking more about uh, components, game objects, and all that sort of thing in some terminology videos that are coming up. So there's another way to add our terrain toolkit. Lee, can you think of any other way to add this in? I'll go ahead and remove a, it one more time. I can think of a couple, actually. Okay, what you got? Um, you could also take your terrain toolkit and mm -hmm. drag it directly onto its object. Ooh, like you mean here in the viewport? Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's try it. Let's go ahead and grab the terrain toolkit, and we'll drag it. And notice, we get the, the little you know circle slash that says, no, you can't do this, kind of like the Ghostbusters logo. And then if we put that uh, right here on the terrain, we get our little plus icon, and boom. So now if I select my terrain, the terrain toolkit is back. So you can add it by dragging it right into the viewport. That's awesome. What's another way? Um, well, that's if we remove it again. Remove, sir. We can go up to our component drop-down menu uh -huh. and go down to terrain. Okay. And we can select Ooh, it there. Terrain toolkit. And that will add it as well. Now, to do that, we have to have the object already selected either here in the viewport or uh, by clicking on it, of course, or you can select it here inside the hierarchy panel. Either way, as long as it's selected, you can then use the component menu to add in your component. And there's all kinds of components that you could potentially add on. And we'll talk more about a lot of these as we progress through this series. 
Okay, so we have our terrain toolkit added. I'll go ahead and just close up this folder because we don't particularly need it anymore. And let's take just a really quick overview of the terrain toolkit. I'm not going to get too terribly involved in it. There are videos that are uh, dedicated specifically to this tool and how it works and what all the knobs and switches do. But generally, the idea of the terrain toolkit is to simplify the terrain creation process by giving you a basis to start from. Uh, just so that you don't have to think, you know, oh, I must go in and sculpt all of my terrain by hand, which on a large area could be quite tedious. Especially if you start off with that uh, four square kilometer oh, yeah. map. That'd take a while. Who wants to really, well, I mean, some people might really want to sit there and design four square kilometers of terrain, but sometimes it's nice to have something already there that you can build from. Like a, a, a kind of a general terrain that you can say, oh, OK, I've got some nice hills now. Uh, let's push this hill down. Let's pull this area up. Let's make a valley here and kind of start from something other than a perfectly flat plane. That is what the terrain toolkit is all about. It allows you to create a basic shape to erode that shape, to add a little bit more of a natural feel to it. Now, I'll throw this out there real quick. You saw early on when we set up the terrain resolution for our terrain, we set everything very low. That means getting super realistic, crisp results from things like erosion isn't really going to happen. Uh, our terrain settings are way too low to really take full advantage of the way erosion looks, but we can still get you know, kind of like cracks and crevices and, and separations at elevations that do look fairly interesting. I just wanted to mention that. And then finally, we have the texture area. And what this does is this procedurally drops textures onto your terrain so that the low altitudes can have... For example, you could have all the low altitudes in your terrain have grass or maybe even sand if you want to do like water, like for beaches and whatnot. And then the next altitude up could be grass. The next altitude up from there could be, I don't know, uh, maybe like forest lands. And then up above that could be snow. You can have up to five of these elevation uh, textures that get applied automatically based on how high things are up. But it's not just elevation. It'll also drop on a texture for cliff faces. So if you have a piece of your terrain that is, you know, vertical or nearly vertical, you can have a, a, a cliff texture automatically get applied so that you don't have to go paint that stuff on by hand. And again, all it's here to do is to give you a basis from which to begin so that later on you can, you can edit, you know, and decide, oh, well, I don't really want snow here, even though it was added automatically. Let's paint over the snow and change it to something else. And we'll talk more about that. For now, let's create our initial shape. Now, we'll start over here inside the Create tab. So take a look at your Terrain Toolkit. Make sure you clicked on Create. And there's a lot of different creation methods. And all these are are different ways that you can calculate a new shape for the terrain. I'm going to switch this right over to Perlin Noise. And there's a lot of presets we have here. So I'm just going to come down under the presets. And Rolling Hills is probably going to be about my best bet. And let's just click Generate Perlin Terrain. Ooh, and if we take a look, now again, I'm going to hold down Alt and drag with the left mouse button. We can see what this has done. So if I can middle mouse drag to kind of frame up. Now, I am really far away, and it'd be nice if we could get a little closer. So what I'm going to do is press the F key, so F as in Foxtrot, and that will zoom us in. And you can see that this is some pretty severe terrain. You wouldn't really want to try to walk around on this. I wouldn't exactly call it rolling hills. I wouldn't either, even though the preset was indeed set to rolling hills. The reason it's so high, I can actually tell you, if we come back under the terrain menu and we go back down to set resolution, because our terrain height is at 200, we're going to get some much higher hills out of this noise. But that's okay. I wouldn't even worry about changing your resolution. Let's just work with what we got. There's a couple of different ways we could do this. One way is to grab our... Actually, here, let me show you a couple of different things. I don't, I don't want to, like, you know, say one thing and then do another, but I'm so excited there's so many different ways to approach this oh, yeah. that my brain kind of wants to tell you all of them at once so we get into, like, this really kind of bottleneck traffic jam when we get to my mouth. Oh, you can have so much fun with just playing with settings. You could just tweak on building a train all day. Absolutely, and if you want to just sit here and pause the video and play with the settings for a while, I encourage that. But what I'm going to do is hit undo, so control Z. Hold down the control key and hit Z. Now if you are on a Macintosh, that's command Z, but you probably already know that if you're on a Mac uh, or a PC, you already know what your standard undo key is going to be, and it's the same in Unity. Uh, what we can do is take our Perlin noise, and our last little property here on our sliders is the blend property. Now I'm going to talk about all these sliders do in a future video specifically over the terrain toolkit, but it will kind of give you the heads up on this one. What this does is this controls how much 
of the shape that we're creating is actually going to be applied to our current terrain. So right now, with a setting of 1, that means 100% of this Perlin noise calculation is going to be dropped on, which is why we get the gigantic hills. We can take that blend and pull it way down while our terrain is still flat. So here, we'd be only using almost 20%. As a matter of fact, if I set this to 0.2, we'd be using exactly 20% of the overall calculation, and only that will get applied. So now if I click Generate Perlin Noise, we get much lower hills, which may be a better place for us to start, but I thought I'd throw that out there. Another way to do it, if we leave the blend all the way up and just generate one more time, so now we have really tall, impossible to maneuver through hills, at least without you know ice picks and things like that, uh, we can come over here to smooth and just kind of start smoothing the terrain. And that's not really going to have as much of an effect as I would like, obviously. So what I'm going to do is just undo back to here where we just had just the low terrains. And if you want to see that one more time, I'll undo all the way back until it's flat because those multiple undos do rock. We'll come over to Perlin Noise once again. And I'm going to pull down the frequency. And I'm actually going to pull down the amplitude a little bit. Now, frequency is just going to be, you know, how much jaggediness, that's, that's my word, how much jaggediness is added, and amplitude is how high the, uh, the waves are going to end up going. So if we, uh, now currently my blend is at 1, so we hit that, and it's nowhere near as severe as it was that first time, but I'm going to undo that, pull my blend down to about halfway, and just click there. And I think this is probably a really nice place for us to start. Now, by all means, if you'd like to take a little bit of time and add other things like uh, Voronoi, which is going to add kind of uh, separated features, things like separated mountains that are kind of by themselves. Uh, you could do Fractal, which is really just another calculation for noise. There's Fractal Noise and Perlin Noise. By all means, play with these and see if you get something that you like better. There's really no right or wrong way to build the level that I'm going to be building throughout these videos. So uh, by all means, have all kinds of fun with it. Uh, we could, for instance, take like, um, well, we could come over to Voronoi and then set this, uh, set the feature type to the, the rolling style hills instead of the pointed style hills. Though these will probably still be a little bit pointy because it's kind of how it works. Pull the blend way down. And as you recall, what I said about blend is that's how much of this calculation will be added to the terrain we currently have. So now if we click, we just added a few little features Whoops, uh, I hit the space bar instead of alt by accident, excuse me. So it's how many of these features get added. So we just added a few more bumps. If I hit control Z, you'll see them kind of go away. So we could increase the blend a little more. And you see a little spiky thingies kind of pop up there. So again, have some fun with these, play with them, come up with something that you like. Once you are finished creating the basic shape of your terrain using these settings, then you'll be ready to go on to what we're going to be doing in the next video, which is where we're going to take the actual toolkit that comes with terrain. Not, not the terrain toolkit. I shouldn't even say toolkit because that's confusing. Uh, the actual tools that are included with a terrain by default. And we'll use these to custom change the shape. We'll actually do some sculpting on the terrain. We'll be handling that in the next video. Lee, is there anything else you want to throw out there? No, that's it. All right, cool. Then let's go ahead and end the video here. And when we come back, we'll add some of our own features by painting them right onto the terrain surface.